this might have a more special meaning today, but I'll say it like this. I was glad when they said unto me, let us enter into the house of the Lord. Magnify the Lord with me, exalt his name together. We're here to praise God, ain't it good? It's been 15 and a half months, but now we're still here and we are back. And no pandemic can keep us from worshiping the Lord. No pandemic can stop us from doing God's work. Aren't you glad to be here today? I'm glad. I hope you're glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Amen, amen. As we go through our service today, it'll be a little different than what you may have experienced in the past when we've been in the house. But we're just adjusting and we're just growing. And we're just thankful to the Lord to be able to still do the work of the Lord even in this day. And so I'm just thankful. We're going to have our announcements now by our uh, media ministry. And following that, we'll have our opening selection by uh, our senior choir. And then we'll come back with scripture and prayer. Announcements for June the 7th through 12th, 2021. Noonday prayer is where we come to seek the face of God. We pray for our pastor, church, family, community, and our country that God will have his way. Connect with us at 12 o'clock via conference call as we pray one for another. Zoom Bible study is scheduled for 7 p.m. Wednesday. Youth Zoom chat with pastor is Thursday. Parents, please encourage your middle, high school, and college students to check in with Pastor Hurst at 6.30 p.m. Sunday, June 12th is Youth Day. We will recognize our 2021 graduates. Morning speakers are Dayana Bandit, Quenisha Hayes, and Javen Marshall. Sunday School Conference call is scheduled for 10 a.m. Books are available for pickup in the foyer. Galatians 6.2 declares, carry each other's burdens, and in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. Please share your time and resources with our sick and our seniors. It's time for us to have our opening selection by our senior choir. Come on, choir.
say you're doing okay when you're trying to hide the pain on your face times are getting harder you prayed and you prayed just keep hoping believing hold on to your faith For the scripture, I'll be coming from the 150th Psalm. I'll be reading from the New International Version. You follow along or whatever version you may have. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with a harp and lyre. Yes, Praise him with timbrel and dancing. Praise him with the strings and pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us look to the Lord. Precious God, our Heavenly Father, we come in the mighty and righteous name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Yes, Lord, we want to thank you for this Sunday morning. Yes, we thank you, Lord, for allowing us to endure 15 and a half months of a pandemic. Yes, but Lord, even though we're not quite out the woods, yes, you've got us to the point that we can begin the process of coming back into the house of prayer. Yes, and so, Lord, we're just thankful for that, Lord. We pray, Lord, this morning that your spirit will reign. We pray this morning that you'll uncumber us from any burden that gets in the way of worshiping you today. We pray today, Lord, that yes, your presence will be made known. Yes, yes, Lord, we pray that you'll bless our pastor today, yes, that he will bring a word from you that will make a difference in our lives. Yes, Lord. Lord, we come this morning not for show, not for self, but Lord, we come to give you honor and praise. Yes, and so, Lord, as yes, we come and we worship you today, bless yes, us, Lord. Yes, Bless this service, Lord, and we ask it all in the righteous and mighty name of Jesus Christ, our leader and forgiver. Yes, Let us say amen. Amen.
We're going to have a spiritual selection by our senior choir. And following that, we will have the spoken word from our own pastor, the Reverend Bruce C. Hurst. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Most merciful, most kind God, our Heavenly Father, come this morning to say thank you for another day's journey. Thank you, Lord, for watching over us all night last night, letting no harm or hurt befall us and holding back that last enemy called death. You let our golden moments roll on just a little while longer. And Lord, thank you that we had a mind to come to the house of the Lord. It's been a long time, but you sure have been good to us. And for that, we're thankful. And we pray now, Lord, for the next few moments that you would invade this space with your presence. That's what we want, the Holy Spirit to fall down on us. Come now, take the altar off the, the altar in heaven and place it on my tongue. That the words that they will hear will be the words of a risen Savior. I pray now, keep my mind from distractions, keep my mouth from error, and keep my heart from pride. In other words, Lord, take all the glory because it all belongs to you. We ask it now in the glorious name of Jesus, our blessed Redeemer, and soon coming King. Amen. 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 God be praised how thankful we are. Amen. Come on, church. We're so thankful to be back in the house of worship one more time. Amen. It's been, a, it's been some perilous journey that we have been on for the last 14, 15 months, and it's been a difficult uh, journey. And some who, who served with us and worshiped with us, and, and now they are, they are gone. And the Lord has, through grace and mercy, he spared us to yet still be in the land of the living, and for that we're so thankful. We're thankful for your prayers and the the midst of being absent from one another, we thank you for your faithfulness. But many of you all have been on Bible studies and conference called prayer, and we thank you so much for being faithful uh, to those, those ministries. We thank you so very much, and thank you so much for your faithfulness in giving uh, while we were away from church. We thank the Lord for you. Amen. I want to thank our usher ministry. Y'all show, look sharp, and you did an excellent job today. Amen. Amen. Thank you so very much. We're asking that you would please work with them as we are, you know, we, we had a training yesterday on terms of entering and exiting the church, so please uh, wait for the ushers before we be dismissed. And we are, you know, we're trying, you know, we're going to be, this going to be a sort of a trial and error, so we do ask for your patience while we are trying to, to put things in order so we all can be safe uh, doing, doing worship. Amen. There's a word from the Lord this morning. That word is found in Second Chronicles chapter 20. Thank you, uh, Reverend Matt, for assisting us. God bless you. Sing your choir. Thank you. Amen. God bless you. Second Chronicles chapter 20. I'm going to read some of this intermittently. Second Chronicles chapter 20, I would like to begin with verse, reading verse 1 through 6 and read verses 20 to 23. Do you have it? Yes. Beginning with verse 1, Second Chronicles uh, chapter 20. And it came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with 
them also beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There coming a great multitude against thee from beyond the, the sea on this side Syria. And behold, they will be in Hazor Tamar, which is in Injida. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask of the Lord. Even of all the city of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem. Notice where he is. In the house of the Lord before the new court. And said, O Lord God, our fathers, art not thou God in heaven? And rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thine hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee. Verse 20, and they rose early in the morning and went forth in the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so you should be established. Believe his prophets, so you shall prosper. And we and he had consulted with the people. He appointed singers unto the Lord, that they should praise the beauty of holiness. As they went out before the army to say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endured forever. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord sent ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy one another. With your presence, certainly with the Holy Spirit, I want to talk about coming out of a crisis. All right. Coming out of a, a crisis. On yesterday, Spanish golfer John Rahm was leading the Memorial Golf Tournament held at the Murfield Golf Club in Dublin, Ohio. He was leading after the third round with a six-stroke lead over his closest competitors. He was on track to win $1,674,000. He was withdrawn from the tournament on national TV after testing positive for COVID-19. He said, one of the things that happens in life is one of those moments how we respond to setbacks and crisis. It defines us as a people. A crisis is an event or circumstance over which we have no control. We have no control. We do not expect it and cannot prepare for it. A crisis when life hits us on the blind side. A crisis will take you by surprise and fill you with anxiety. A crisis is when everything you trusted in collapse. When the bottom falls completely out. You have no idea where to turn. You have no hunch in terms of what to do and you have no direction. In our biblical text this morning, Jehoshaphat is the king of Judah. He took the throne at age 35 and reigned for 25 years. He was a God-fearing king. He wanted to place God in every aspect of his life. He was not like many New Day Christians. He didn't have selected obedience. The things of God he liked, he did. But the things of God he didn't like, he didn't do. Jehovah, Jehoshaphat walked in total obedience to God. God was first in his life. God was first in his priorities. He ignited a revival in Judah by having the Levites to go out to teach the word of the Lord. In our biblical text this morning, Jehoshaphat finds himself in a crisis. Jehoshaphat was informed just 14 miles away. The Moabites, the Ammonites, and the people of Mount Seir, 
they have joined forces to annihilate Jehoshaphat and Judah. Je Jehoshaphat has a crisis on his hand. He didn't see it coming. He was blindsided. He stands to lose his life and the lives of the people in Judah. He finds himself in a crisis. Well, what lesson can we learn from this text in terms of coming through or coming out of a crisis? According to verse 5, the first thing Jehoshaphat does is gather the people in the, in the Lord's house. He goes to church and go in prayer. He boasts and brag on the Lord. From verses 6 through 12, he goes to the house of the Lord and boasts on the Lord. I like how the New England Standard Version puts it. He said, oh Lord God, our Father, are you not God in heaven? You rule of all the kingdoms of the nation. In your hands is power and might. And none is able to withstand you because you drove out the inhabitants for us and gave us this land forever. He went to the house of the Lord and he boasted up to about the goodness of the Lord. Then he said, now the men of Moab, Amnon, and Mount Seir are coming against us. We are powerless against them, but our eyes are upon you. Saints of God, did you get it? Jehoshaphat is in a crisis, but yet he's in the house of the Lord boasting on his God. Are you not God in heaven? Boasting. You rule, you rule of all the kingdoms and nations. Boasting. In your hand is power and might. Boasting. You will, we cry out to you in affliction and you will hear us. Boasting. We don't know what we're going to do, but our eyes are upon you. Boasting on the Lord. Saints of God, I can care with the psalmist. In Psalms 122 verse 1, I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. Yes, yes. Saints of God, we've come back to the Lord's house after 15 months yes. through a raging COVID-19 pandemic. Yes. We have something to boast about. Yes. The Lord has been good to us. The Lord has brought us through many dangerous times and snares. The Lord has kept us alive. Some jobs were shut down, but the Lord kept food on our tables and a roof over our head. We got a reason to give God praise. Some of us, I'm and knowing, were in the presence of people with COVID-19. We were quarantined, but we tested, we tested negative. The Lord were with us. Some of us in here this morning contracted COVID-19, but the Lord healed you and brought you off your sick bed. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, thank God for saving me. Yes, if you won't brag about him, I'll boast about him. The Lord's been good to me. He brought me through valley's lows. He brought me on the rough side of the mountain. The Lord has been good to me. Yes, he has, church. Yes, he has. A rock in a weary land. A bridge over troubled water. He's been good to us. He's been good to us. Jehoshaphat goes to the house of worship in the middle of a crisis. This text is also tended to teach us that the strategy for making it through a crisis came by worshiping in the house of the Lord. 
the strategy for victory came while they were in church. Verse 14 to 17 said the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel and he said to all of Judah and Jehoshaphat the Lord said be not afraid nor dismayed by the reason of this great multitude for the battle is not yours the battle belongs to the Lord stand you still and see the salvation of the Lord Fear ye not and do not be dismayed. Yes, yes. The strategy for victory, uh -huh. for making it through a crisis, came while in the Lord's house, yes, yes. through in-person worship. Yes. Church psychologists and their naysayers and gloom spreaders who have pronounced the sinners of death over the church. Some say after COVID-19 the church will never be the same. Some say the church has lost its relevancy. It must be technologically savvy. Live streaming on Facebook, Zoom, YouTube. All of this is good. But according to the Bible the strategy came while they were in church. There's no substitute to being in the Lord's house and in the presence of the Lord. That's where the strategy came. Pastor Hurst, I'm a black man and we are catching hell on every side. We are in a crisis. What's the strategy? Here's your strategy. Walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. No standing in the way of sinners. No seat in the seat of the scornful. But your delight shall be in the law of the Lord. And meditate on his word both day and night. And it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That shall bring forth his fruit in due season. His leaf shall not wither. And whatever he does, he shall prosper. Yes. Pastor, I'm experiencing mental crisis. What's the strategy? Thou will keep him in peace. Whose mind is stayed on him. Pastor, I'm, I'm experiencing financial crisis. What's the strategy? Bring all your tithes into the storehouse. And see when I open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. Yes, I'm experiencing, I'm getting old, Pastor. I'm experiencing the age in crisis. What's the strategy? I've been young, but now I'm old. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken. No his seed begging bread. Yes, that's the strategy. In trouble, strategy, Jesus. In a tight strategy, Jesus. In a fixed strategy, Jesus. In sickness strategy, Jesus. Out of option strategy, Jesus. Out of answer strategy is Jesus. Out of strength strategy is Jesus. That's our strategy. Jesus is our strategy. Don't have the fact we seeing the strategy while in church. Look at the first phase of the strategy. Verse 17. You will not have to fight. Yes, Sit yourselves. Stand you still and see the salvation of the Lord. No saints of God three forces. The Ammonite, the people of Mount Sierra, and the Moabites are coming with soldiers, are coming with swords, are coming with knives. 
And your strategy is stand you still and see the salvation of the Lord. Yes, yes. Bible readers, this sound familiar. Yes. The same strategy the Lord implored by the Red Sea yes. as Pharaoh was coming upon the people of God. The people of God was trapped in a cover sack with the same strategy. Fear ye not. Stand still. See the salvation of the Lord. The Egyptian who you see today, you are seen no more. The Lord shall fight for you. Hold your peace and go forward. Pastor, just a little bit over my head. Please connect the dots for me. In each situation, the Lord is asking the people of God to look weak, to look defeated, to look frail, to look like wimps, to look faint, to look vulnerable. He doing that because he telling them I want to use you all as bait so I can draw the enemy in. The enemy's going to say they weak. They ain't got no weapons. They just standing there. But then I'm going to fight. Sit yourself still. Stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord. Saints of God, if you're in a crisis because of haters, Causing you not to sleep at night. You don't have to fuss. You ain't got to cuss nobody out. You ain't got to argue. The Lord will fight for you. It looks like you're weak. But the Bible said in weakness. His strength his made perfect. The Lord will. He'll fight for you. Harder yet might be the fight. Right may often yield the might. Wickedness of wild may reign and Satan calls may seem the game. But there is a God who rules above with a hand of power and a heart of love. If I'm right, if I'm right, he shall fight my battle. Tell your neighbor he will fight your battle. Yes, he will. He'll fight for you. Hold your peace. The Lord will fight for you. Yes, he will. Hezekiah, Jehoshaphat, goes to church in the midst of a crisis. And while in church, he gets the strategy to come out of a crisis. Strategy number one, sit yourself, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. Here it is in closing. Second strategy is praise. According to verse 20 and 21. He said, hear me, O Judah. Believe in the Lord. So you shall prosper. And you shall be established. Jehoshaphat, the Bible says, he appointed singers. He didn't appoint the deacons. He didn't appoint the trustees. He didn't even appoint the ministers. But he appointed singers unto the Lord. And what they, what they did, they went towards the enemy, singing the Lord's song. They marched towards the enemy, singing praise the Lord, for his mercy endured forever. They had one song, heading towards the enemy. Praise the Lord, for his mercy Endure it forever. Just one song. Go in the war of the enemy. Praise you the Lord for his mercy 
endured forever. And the Bible says, the Bible says, while they were praising the Lord, the Lord called ambushments. He calls their enemy to kill one another. And the people of God, when they got there, all the enemy were dead. They don't know how the Lord did it. He just did it. I tell you, praise is a weapon. Yes, the more you praise him, the better you will feel. Yes, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Our salvation, presence of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. I praise him when I'm feeling good. I praise him when I'm sick. I praise him when I'm broke. I praise him when you talk about me. Yes, yes, praise will make a difference. Yes, anybody in here got a praise, he'll pick you up and turn you around. Yes, the Lord has been good to us. Give him praise, glory, hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord has been good to me. Amen. The Lord has been good. Yeah, I'm coming through. I'm coming through the crisis. And if you notice the text, that sometimes and it's not just praise by itself uh -huh. because their praise was an expression of faith. Uh -huh. Praise without faith ain't no praise. Yes, yes. You got to have faith with praise. Yes, yes. And then now they got this new thing talking about giving him a crazy praise. Uh -huh. That's insane. Oh, yes. Crazy mean I don't know what I'm thanking him for. <laughs> but I know why I'm thanking him. He woke me up this morning. Started me on my way, put food on my table, the blood still running warm in my body. I've got so much to thank him for. And you ought to be thankful because and what he did, the enemy never could attack because the enemy, they killed one another. And one reason your enemy couldn't get to you because they fell out before they got to you. He took care of them before they got to you. And that's what he'll do. I'm coming out of a crisis. There's never going to be any substitute for in-person worship. Where we see the saints and we come together and praise him and glorify him. And your fire, your fire breaks out over here, fire over there. There'll be no substitute for in-person worship. Never no substitute for in-person in -person worship. Those who are viewing through live screening, we thank the Lord for you. We want to remember those who are sick among us. If you're watching live streaming and you're in a crisis and you don't know how to come out, you can come out with Jesus. 
but you need to have a relationship with him. The Bible says if you confess the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. With the heart man believe unto righteousness, with the mouth confession of men unto salvation, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. They shall be. May we all stand. I want to remember in prayer this morning, Evangelist Glenda Hopper, Deaconess Gwendolyn Sutherland, Lakeisha Graham, Brenda Patterson Farrelly, Kathy Ross, the sister of Minister McQueen, Maurice Smithser, Maverick Blanton, Sister Frances Lewis, Brother Calvin Lee Jr., David Peterkin, Sister Doretha Black, Brother Carl and Sister Vicki Wade, Deacon Worthy Captain, Mother Clara Hollinsworth, Mother Pearl Stevenson, Mother Desiree Huff. It's so good to have Mother Catherine here with us this morning. Amen. Mother Amen. Inez Craig Myers, Amen. Mother Harding, Sister Queen Troy, Franklin Bowden Sr., Jeanette Bowden, Diamante Bowden, Stephanie Bright, First Lady Camille Hurst, and Maurice, and Maurice Hurst. Amen. 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 Reverend Black Flipper, would you lead us in a word of prayer? Oh, Lord, our God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the gift of this day, God. For your grace and your mercy, Lord. God, we thank you for just keeping us for 15 months, God. God, we honor you on this day, God, like never before, God. Thank you, God. God, we ask that you receive the petitions for every name that was called, for every situation, God, for there is no one greater than you, God. And we cry out, oh, Lord, have mercy right now, God, in the name of Jesus. We need you like never before, God. And we're trusting and believing that it's already done, God. So hear our prayer, oh Lord, on this day, God. Thank you, God. Anoint us afresh like never before, God. Comfort God. Strengthen us, God. God, give us the boldness to lead others to you right now in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is, God. We realize on this day that the battle is not ours, but it is indeed yours. So we release it unto you on this day, God. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for all of the petitions, for every person who has entered today for face-to-face -to -face worship. There is none like it. No substitute, God. And we give praise, we give thanks and adoration unto you. Now, Heavenly Father, if we've erred, if we've sinned in any way, if we've done anything that was not pleasing in your sight, God, we ask for forgiveness right now, God. In the name of Jesus, we ask that you forgive us and restore us like never before and do a new thing in all of us. We ask that you restore to our pastor everything that he has poured out for every person to receive your word. And help us, Lord, as we build your kingdom. For this is our prayer. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, 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 amen. and amen. Amen, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. It was made ready to share in our Holy Communion service. It was in 1947 that Jackie Robinson was the first African-American person to play Major League Baseball. In one game at Ebbett Field, the home field for the Brooklyn Dodgers, Jackie Robinson, he made an error. He made a mistake. 
Now this is at his home field. And about 90% of the people in the fan, in the stands, got up and jeered him, pointed their finger at him because he had made an error, because he had made a mistake. The shortstop named Pee Wee Reese went over to Jackie Robinson, took his arms and hands and put them around Jackie Robinson. And after the game was over, he was interviewed, Jackie Robinson was. He said, Pee Wee Reese saved my life when he put his arms and hands around me. But I got one better than that. I had made mistakes, I made errors, but on a hill called Calvary, Jesus Christ took his scar print hands around me and took away my sin, my guilt, my shame. Aren't you thankful? He didn't have to do it, but he did. He forgave us of our sins. He took a wretched undone like me and put his arms around me. And now I'm saved. I'm redeemed. I'm counted righteous by the blood of Christ. Amen. Let us pray, O oh Lord, as we make preparation to participate in communion, we ask that you cleanse us from all unrighteousness and all sin. Because you said if we were drink this, not confessing this, we drink it and eat it to our own condemnation. So cleanse us from all our sins, Lord. And bless now the, the bread and the wine. We ask it all now. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, we thank you so much for coming to worship and we we thank the Lord for you. We asking that you not congregate out the church because we're trying to keep everybody safe and the ushers will um uh, will lead will lead you out and now God we thank you. Bless us, be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Can we go out singing? I know it was the blood, amen. Usher's gonna lead you out, amen. Blood. 